Welcome to our daily news edition broadcast to you live here on Canal Algeri. Coming up next. The President of the Republic extends a solemn welcome to the President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan, General Abdel Fattah Al Burhan Abdurrahman, in Algeria for a two day visit. Al-Burhan asserts that his country is a victim of a regional conspiracy and bookends any Algerian involvement in potential Arab or regional dialogues to help resolve the crisis in Sudan. Abroad, as massacres and famine devastate and threaten the residents of Gaza, several countries decide to suspend aid to the UN agency for Palestinian refugees, risking exacerbating the already dire situation in the enclave. We will later offer you a tour in the Ahmed Bey Palace in the heart of the old city of Constantine, standing as a witness to an era in the country's history. Good evening and welcome again. First of all, the President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan, General Abdel Fattah Al Burhan Abdurrahman, arrived in Algeria this Sunday for an official two day visit. Solemn reception awaited Algeria's guest as President Abdel Majid Aboun welcomed him at the presidential headquarters. After listening to the national anthems of both countries and the flag salute, the head of state and the president of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan reviewed various formations of the National People's Army, which honored them.
President of the Republic, along with the President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan, posted for a souvenir photo in front of the national and foreign press. Later on, both the President of the Republic and the President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan greeted the high-ranking officials who came to welcome him, headed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Ahmed Abbas, and the Principal Private Secretary of the Presidency, Berlam Berlam. And for his part, the President of the Republic also greeted the accompanying delegation of the President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan. Still at the presidency, the head of state held face-to-face -face discussions with the president of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan, General Abdel Fattah Al-Burhan Abdurrahman. Later on, the President of the Republic and the President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan, General Abdel Fattah Al Burhan Abdurrahman, co presided extended discussions, which included from the Algerian side the Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Ahmed Attaf, and the Principal Private Secretary of the Presidency. The Sudanese side included the high level delegation accompanying the President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan. In a joint statement to the press with the President of the Sovereignty Council of the Republic of Sudan, the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, affirmed that Algeria stands alongside Sudan to overcome its difficult situation as it is a target of evil forces. The head of state added that Algeria was and still in favor of resolving any dispute or internal conflict with an internal version, far from all forms of foreign interference, as the first and the last word remains that of the brotherly Sudanese people. تتطابق وجهات نظر الجزائر والسودان حيال عديد من القضايا والمسائل الإقليمية والدولية. والجزائر تقف إلى جانب الشعب السوداني لتجاوز الأوضاع الصعبة التي يعيشها هذا البلد الشقيق الذي تستهدفه هو الآخر قوى الشر حيث كانت الجزائر ولا تزال مع حل أي خلاف أو نزاع داخلي برؤية داخلية بحتة بعيدا عن كل أشكال التدخلات الأجنبية حيث تعود الكلمة الأولى والأخيرة دائما بمكونات الشعب السوداني شقيق. The President of the Republic welcomed Sudan's position in favor of Algeria's accession to the Security Council as a non permanent member, highlighting that Algeria will work hard to support the just causes of, on the African continent and the world in order to reduce conflicts and tensions that have become a threat to the stability of countries and the tranquility of peoples. تحيي الجزائر موقف السودان الشقيق الداعم لعضوية الجزائر في مجلس الأمن الدولي وستعمل جاهدة على نصرة القضايا العادلة في القارة الإفريقية والعالم والحد من وطأة النزاعات والتوترات التي باتت تشكل خطرا داهما the President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan expressed his thanks regarding Algeria's permanent support for the just causes, affirming that it will continue its efforts in this regard during its mandate in the Security Council. <laughs> Salutation and appreciation to the President and the people of Algeria for their constant support to justice and their strong support to Sudan to handle its issues through history. We have discussed several topics of regional relevance.
given its wisdom and its unwavering position and its earning to a well-deserved membership in the Security Council. I salute and congratulate Algeria. We accept from this strong state only the continuous support to justice and to nation's freedom of a dignified life. We also discussed a lot about cooperation fields and welcomed all options with great will and optimism about its success and continuity. <laughs> The president of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan affirmed that his country is a victim of a conspiracy orchestrated by several regional and international parties while expressing his satisfaction regarding Algeria's role in the regional and Arab levels. Let's have a listen. <laughs> There are conspiracies plotted by regional and international partners, also bribe nationals against Sudan and their people. But with the sincere national people's will prevail, and Sudan will stand up again thanks to God and support of the true nationals of this Arab and Muslim nation. Greetings once more to the Algerian leadership and the Algerian people. We reiterate our thanks and appreciation to the understanding of Sudan issues and also the warm welcome. We are very glad about Algeria's presence around table discussion, whether it's African or Arab, where Algeria always works on resolving issues. <laughs> Accompanied by the Foreign Affairs Minister, the President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan went to the Martyrs' Sanctuary here in Algiers. That was where he observed a minute of silence in the memory of the martyrs of the Glorious Revolution and laid a wreath of flowers in front of the commemorative stele. The President of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan, General Abdel Fattah Al-Burhan Abdurrahman, arrived to Algiers. He was welcomed at the Huari Boumdin International Airport by the Prime Minister Nadir al arbawi representing the President of the Republic. And at the Presidency of the Republic, the Private Secretary of the Presidency held talks with General Asadak Ismail Mahmoud, Director of the Bureau of the Presidential Council of the Sudanese Sovereignty. The head of the Algerian diplomacy, Ahmed Ataf, held discussions with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Sudan, Ali Asadak Ali Hussein. And for his part, General Ghani Badawi, Director of Military Industries at the Ministry of National Defense, held discussions with General Ahmed Ibrahim Ali Mufaddal, General Director of Defense Industries of the Sudanese Republic. In a different context and following the decision of the head of state to promote seven municipalities to delegated provinces, the Minister of Interior, Brahim Marad, officially installed Yunus Mirah as new deputy governor of Aflu in Lawat province. Marad affirmed on the occasion that this move is part of a regional rebalancing, the aim of which is to enhance the citizens' quality of life. To end the flan now, where we will visit one of the most important electrical cables factory of the country. More than 13,000 tons of cables are produced yearly, a model of a successful Algerian Egyptian investment project to Port Bayer of Hamush, taken up by Yassin Hamdi. It is one of the first electrical cable factories in the province of Endefla, a partnership between Algeria and Egypt.
This unit produces all types of cables, such as fire-resistant cables. It is also the first producer of electrical transformers and accessories. More than 13,000 tons of electrical cables are produced every year. This production allowed Algeria to reduce by 35% its import bill for all types of electrical cables. We produce all types of cables of all voltages from low to high tension up to 220 kilovolts and also optical fiber cables. We manufacture all the cables needed by the Algerian market. Operational since 15 years and considered as a leader in the national market, the group employs 3,000 workers in Algeria, local skills that contribute to the development of the factory and they export to 110 countries around the world. I work here since 15 years and I am one of the first workers who benefited from a three-month train in Egypt. Today, as you may see, it's mainly the local workers that keep the factory running and it makes us proud. We have put in place four-year action plans since 2020 that consists in the introduction of new products made in Algeria. We aim to cover the national market and thus end the need for import. The investment in Algeria is safe and successful. Algeria's non-hydrocarbon exports are remarkably increasing from $1.7 billion in 2019 to $13 billion in the end of 2023, a materialization of the promises of the President of the Republic aiming to free Algeria from the hydrocarbon dependence. To Gaza now, where more than 100 residents are martyred overnight as a result of the Zionist airstrikes. Meanwhile, several countries decided to suspend aid to the UN agency for Palestinian refugees. This can worsen the already difficult situation of Palestinians, warned the Secretary General of the United Nations, Guterres. Najah Tayyar with the details. Nothing seems to stop the Zionist war machine. Despite international calls for a cessation of hostilities, the incessant bombardment of Khan Yunus continues. And even worse, the occupying army has launched a carefully orchestrated campaign of incitement against the UNRWA. This perfidious maneuver aims to erase the issue of refugees and the right to return to their land. The impact of this double threat between the devastating attacks and the suspension of funding to the agency by the United States, Britain, Canada, Australia, Germany, Italy, Finland and France, who have already abandoned their humanitarian duty, will exacerbate the crisis in Gaza. For his part, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has urged the countries that have suspended funding for the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees in the strife-torn region to at least guarantee the continuation of its operations, which are vital for the two million people who depend on UNRWA's critical assistance for their daily survival. This planned campaign by the Zionist entity is a tactic of an old occupation plan and a retaliation against the United Nations Secretary General, according to the President of the Palestinian National Council, Rawhi Fatouh. The Commissioner General of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees said that the suspension of the agency's funding by many countries was shocking and threatens the humanitarian work currently being done in the region, particularly in Gaza, and calls on these countries to reverse their decisions. He even stressed that the Palestinians in Gaza do not need this additional collective punishment. Up to 150 Palestinians were martyred yesterday in the Zionist siege of the Nasser Hospital in Khan Yunus, the second largest city in the Gaza Strip. The Palestinians were forced to bury the dead in the hospital's courtyard, a hospital facing a serious and dangerous shortage of blood, while many anesthetics have been used up. To sports now with the glorious return of the national handball team after an honorable participation in the African Nations Championship. Unfortunately, the Greens were defeated yesterday in the final against Egypt with a score of 29 to 21. The national team landed at Algiers this Monday and was welcomed by the Minister of Youth and Sports, Abdurrahman Hamad, who congratulated the national team players and coaching staff for their performance in Cairo, ensuring that all means will be provided for them to be prepared for the World Championship and the final qualifying tournament for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. 
We take you now to visit the Ahmed Bey Palace in the heart of the old town of Kastantin province. The palace today houses the National Museum of Arts and Traditional Cultural Expressions. Amina Ben Badouj and Rani Bahri. Located in the old city of Constantine province, the Ahmed Bey Palace was once the residence of the Bey at that time and the center of power in the region. This majestic palace still stands as a building testifying to the art of Ottoman architecture. <laughs> The architecture of this palace is exceptional. It is distinguished by its shapes and decorations inspired by oriental palaces. What still makes it unique is the ornamental details, including wall frescoes illustrating themes aimed at highlighting the power of the Ottoman Empire and the political role of this palace at that time. A building which enchants the mind and attracts the eye, thanks to the artistic paintings its imposing arcades and its rooms. There are also gardens and green spaces transporting us through distant eras which tell the story of the civilizations which followed one another. This is the last construction built at that time in Constantine and perhaps even in all of Algeria. What distinguishes it are the gardens which were laid out around it, making its green spaces the central element of all the rooms of the palace. The palace is now called the National Museum of Arts and Traditional Cultural Expressions. It has undergone several restoration operations by experts and today welcomes tourists. We are in the wing dedicated to Ahmed Bey's daughter, a splendid space. The palace also houses archaeological windows, secret passages, as well as a prison and stables for horses. The palace of Ahmed Bey remains a vibrant legacy, resonating with echoes of history and the splendor of a very old era. And with that, we come to the end for today's program. Thank you for joining us and goodbye.